two would read. You think they're going really well, right? Yes, he's going to say. And then that stupid girl who sleeps outside in the woods in a tent, <laughs> patient zero, brings her wood through. <laughs> and you get her barefoot wood through. Like, like how many others did? Like 20. 20 others. So, I get real upset when I think about it. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. But, okay. So, so, so there you are, you sit. And I was talking to your dad a little bit about this. And, and what I understand is that you were ill, and you, you really you were so sick you didn't have a chance to really get into the group that you had hoped to get into. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was sitting in a chair in the auditorium. Uh, I, I couldn't, my legs were shaky. You know, I was in dehydration. It was just, uh, I just sat there and the group kind of just told me, asked me if I had one. I was like, no, they're like, you're in mine. So I went up to my room, I slept, I drank some Alka Seltzer, and I peed a little more. And when I, when I came down, there was more people in the group that I didn't even know that were going to be in the group. And I was just kind of stuck in there, kind of had to jump in the best I could with the song I didn't even know, and you know. And that brings me to that nag. That cop woman. I thought you did real good despite her. But tell us about the people that you met there, the, the people that you were other thing with. Did you make any good friends, people that you still stay in contact with? Um, in Pittsburgh, I auditioned with a kid named uh, Evan Frankowitz, and uh, he was one of my friends I, um, back when we were putting groups together. Right before I got sick, you know, we were, we were planning on, well, we were planning in Pittsburgh to be in the same group. And uh, I'd also planned to be in a group with uh, Reed, Reed Grimm, because he was in Pittsburgh too, he was a good friend of mine. He showed me some really cool music too, and I was excited, we had a whole thing planned out. But, uh, you know, sick people were shunned from, from groups in Hollywood, you know. So um, I just had to do what I could do. And um, you know, when I got to Hollywood, um, before any of the audition started, I was sitting in a chair, and right in front of me was a, a guy named uh, Philip Phillips. And uh, I, I, we talk, I talked to him and I uh, asked where he was from. We talked about guitars and we turned on jamming later. It was going to be fun. I was excited. And uh, I got sick. Yeah. You know, sometimes it all works out for the better. What, what a lot of people would ask me, and so I'm asking you now, do you have plans to audition again? Are you going to do this again? Yeah. Um, you know, it's all up in the air. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, you know. I, I'm not sure. Okay, well, there's another whole side to this that maybe not everybody else knows. You are right now looking for a record deal. Uh, uh, no, no, no. You are looking for a record deal, right? Yeah, 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 but now you've been out to L.A., you've got some national notoriety, even if it's a fleeting quick thing, and you've made some contacts. I mean, there's a couple. I mean, I know there's a couple. All right, let's talk about J.J. Gray of MoFo. Now, a lot of people have no idea who J.J. Gray of MoFo is. Can you tell people who J.J. Gray of MoFo is? He's an incredible kind of unheard of singer from MoFo. He's um, real bluesy, just down, down and dirty. And I, I, I love his music. He's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. And you, you play a lot of music like him, yeah? Yeah, we cover some of his songs too in our set. And is it possible that he's giving you a little bit of advice and some help to realize, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I talked to him on the phone a couple of times and we talked. And you have a deal with your dad, am I right? A deal with my dad? Something about if you, if you get a, a, a record deal before the next auditions come around, then you won't audition. But if you don't, you might. I mean, <laughs> that's nothing like talking to a guy's parents and then throwing it right back into his face. They play hundreds of his friends. So, <laughs> oh, he hates me now. So, so what, but seriously, are you really thinking about auditioning next year for Idol? Um, you yeah. can see these people would love me to. I, I, because we really feel like if you hadn't been sick, 
you know, still have right on through. You know, at all the, time, at all the times, you know, they're trying to just play a lot more and uh, I just want to get things going that. And, you know, it was so crazy and so hectic and stressful, even though it was fun. But, um, I, you know, maybe. It's all still maybe. Okay. It's all still maybe, you know, so there's another year. Okay. Now, um, what I gotta ask you what you thought of Ryan, because you got to meet Ryan once or twice, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, what do you think of Ryan Seacrest? Uh, he's short. He's, <laughs> he's uh, I mean, he's a nice guy. He's funny. You know, he's a lot funnier than he looks on TV. You know, he gets he gets everything done in one take, and he's real professional. But um, I mean, he's so smart, it's absolutely crazy. I, I, but um. He's a real nice guy. I mean, yeah, real nice. If there was anything that we can, can you can you share something that we would not know about American Idol that really is a surprise to most people when you tell them? Um, after every audition, the executive producers come up to the judge table and they talk with the judges and they work out what they're going to do, and then the judges will say the reactions and then take and choose. Yeah. So the reactions aren't right away. No. Well, I didn't know that. Did anybody else know that or guess that? Interesting. All right. Um, well, I have I have one more thing here. Um